Welcome back guys. So today I'm going to start filling my raised beds, but before I do, I'm going to get my baby chicks and put them inside one of the raised beds while I do my work. So today I'm going to use a hoga culture method to fill up my raised beds. All right guys, so now that the chicks are taken care of, uh, I'm going to start filling up my beds using the uh, hoga culture method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put logs and wood and branches first now some people use cardboard box that's fine but these uh, beds are so high they're 24 inches high that I don't think I need it so I'm gonna start with some logs and branches that I brought from my daughter's house now they are decomposing already so that's gonna be outstanding for my raised bed so over time these branches and logs will decompose and add nutrients to the to the ground or to the soil so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to put uh, logs at the bottom. On top of that, I'm going to go get some wood chips that I'm going to throw in as well. Wood chips here in my town, they're free. My township has a mountain of them that anyone that lives here can pick them up. Once I offload this trailer, we're going to go and get some wood chips. Uh, uh, above that, I'm going to throw some, uh, some soil and compost on top of that. So yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be nice. I'm getting ready to, to plant here in a few weeks. Right now it's what, uh, April 28th or 29th. I can't plant anything, uh, right just yet because it's a little bit cold in, uh, in, uh, at night and yeah, temperatures fall sometimes to like 30, 32, uh, below freezing. But uh, I'm going to wait till the temperatures go to 50 and above before I plant anything outside. And that's going to be in about two, maybe three weeks from now. Sometime in mid, mid to late May. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start getting some of these logs over to my bed. guys so I cleaned out the trailer and this is what most of it looks like here notice that I put the logs kind of like in line uh, but I try to fill in all the gaps and most of this wood is already starting to decompose check it out you see this yeah it's decomposing so hope maybe by next year whatever dirt i have on top is going to go it's going to sink down just a little bit maybe a couple of inches i might have to refill and well i take that back i know i'm going to have to add a little bit on top so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some pine shavings that i've been saving uh, from the chicks not a whole lot that i have right now but we're, we're going to use it Right now, I just have one bag. Yeah, and it smells like uh, chicken poop. So, yeah, I'm just gonna spread it throughout the uh, the bed. Next step, I'm gonna go get some wood chips, free, from the township. So I brought a bucket, but I'm not going to need the bucket all that much because I'm going to use the trailer. And the shovel, obviously. And this is a mountain of uh, wood chips that the township offers to anyone who lives here. Free of charge. Check it out guys, this is nice, nice wood chips. It's already not decomposing yet, but oh, it's gonna be great for my uh, raised beds. Wow, and I'm gonna throw a bunch here on the, on the trailer too. All right, now 
since my pocket is filled, I'm gonna throw a lot here on the uh, on the trailer. That's what I got a trailer for. Oh, and by the way, come over here. Yesterday I put these uh, two by eights. No, yesterday I put these one by eights here on the side to prevent wood chips from falling over. I put it all the way around. And the boards were cheap. They're only like $10 at the depot. I mean, you can pick them up anywhere. These are two by eights, but I could, in the future, I can get two by tens, two by twelves, and I could probably fit a lot more stuff on the trailer that way. All right, guys, so here we are. I have enough for now. I filled the bucket, and also I put about half of uh, wood chips on the trailer itself yeah i could carry twice maybe two and a half times more but i don't have a need for it i always have a constant supply of wood chips right here so this is good enough for now here we are back home so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take that bucket and just take it over to the race bed and dump it come back fill it up and do it as many times as i need and the rest i'm just gonna say for the second race bed which by the way has all the baby chicks right now uh, I think I'm gonna leave this the way it is and I'm gonna build I have two more race beds that I'm gonna build here in the next couple of days but yeah it's gonna go here all right guys so if i haven't said it already doing it the way i'm doing it now the hoka culture method it's going to save me a ton of money when it comes to soil or compost guys so I'm gonna use the rake now to move it around a little bit and I think I have more than a third of the race bed filled already now the idea was to use the logs and branches and the wood chips to fill up to about a third of the race bed and then after that topsoil uh, the other third and the last third for compost but in my case well, this is this is gonna work out. It's perfect. I'm gonna save a ton of money on compost. Oh, and by the way, I haven't ordered the compost yet. I'm gonna order that Monday. So I'm gonna finish this video, not today, but in a couple of days. But to you, it'll be just a second. But after this, I'm gonna get some uh, topsoil and the compost will be after that. Okay, I'm done with this phase. I try to fill up the holes as best as I could. And now we're gonna go get some topsoil with the tractor.
we'll get some more. There we go guys. So we have free wood, free logs, branches, free chips, and now free soil right from my land. I have one more thing left and that's compost. That's coming next. It's about a week later and finally we have our compost. guys I think I'm done for now uh, I brought enough compost now I'm gonna add some peat moss and mix it in just a little bit So I added about a half a bag of peat moss. Now I'm gonna mix it in and the other half, I'm gonna add it to that one when I fill it in. So 
so I'm almost done here. I'm gonna bring a little bit, maybe a couple of inches of more dirt or compost because this is gonna sink a little bit over the next year. So I wanna, yeah, put just a tad more. And I'm also gonna use a, a little bit of uh, organic uh, fertilizer. You can use whichever brand you prefer. And then I'm gonna mix it in one last time. I have a feeling this is gonna be my best year ever for vegetables. What do you think, huh? And look at this soil, guys. Just look at it. Uh, it's beautiful. And it feels great under the hand. Oh yeah. All right, guys, so I am done with this bed. I am very, very satisfied today. And as you know, I added some sphagnum peat moss and according to Senor Google, the benefits of peat moss, peat moss is an important component of most potting soils and sea starting mediums. It holds several times its weight in moisture and releases the moisture to the plant roots as needed. Lots of benefits there. And there's a lot more, but you, you guys can Google that. But anyway, I plan to start uh, planting here in the next couple of days. And I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something new. I certainly did. I, <laughs> I learn a lot of new things anytime I do a video. So yeah, definitely I'm enjoying being a homesteader up here in upstate New York. So with that, you guys have a good day, afternoon, and night, wherever you are. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, and before I go, guys. You don't need a raised bed to grow if you live in a city. You can use a bucket, any five gallon bucket. I used buckets like these for years when I lived in a city to grow my tomatoes, peppers, and culantro, cilantro, a bunch of other stuff. So again, if you don't have the space for a raised bed, use a bucket. Even in the hot time,